Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. This is our third lesson in the course Better Than Airbnb that I'm releasing free to my subscribers at start. Now soon I will be locking off this unit and only offering it to folks who have paid for the course. All the information about how much it's going to cost and when we're going to start charging will give you that information after Thanksgiving. So enjoy this next lesson of Better Than Airbnb. Welcome to Ruby Thursdays, Better Than Airbnb, Unit 1, Lesson 3, Model Diagramming with UML. What is UML? If you're not familiar with it, the Unified Modeling Language is a general purpose developmental modeling language in the field of software engineering that is intended to provide a standard way to visualize the design of a system. So you have all your user stories and you know what's going to happen, but this gives you a visual for how the pieces are put together. There are different kinds of diagrams. We're just going to be working with a structure diagram in this lesson. A structure diagram emphasizes the things that must be present in the system being modeled. Since structure diagrams represent the structure, they are used extensively in documenting the software architecture of software systems. For example, the component diagram, which describes how a software system is split up into components and shows the dependencies among these components. So we're just going to be working with our models. I'm going to leave out all of the interactions and things like that. In my projects, I found that making this diagram is very helpful to keeping an idea of the full scope of the project, but I don't need it to be perfect or fully done for me to finish the job. As long as I have the user stories to guide me and the model diagram or map, as I like to call it, together, that helps me build the project. You can use a pen and paper or a pencil because things do change. You can use a whiteboard. Whiteboards are helpful, especially when you are working with other people and you're deciding, hey, maybe this goes here, maybe that goes there. For this lesson, I'm going to use Draw.io to draw it out. And this works well if you're working remotely and it's super easy to edit. For this lesson, the process will be to read through the user stories to pick out the models. And we're just gonna do objects that need tables, determine the attributes of each model, and then outline relationships between the models. Taking a look at our user stories, I see I have a guest or host. We'll make that one model to be a member. I see that we have a profile that we need to build. And then also looking a little further, a location that we need to build. Let's just start with those. I started off first with the member. Again, a member can be a guest or a host. And you can go under in Draw.io under the UML and they have lots of different text boxes and things that you can easily drag over and use. I like to use the one that says table name because it has a couple of columns. So I'm going to change this one to be location. And then I will change to down below, put in the attributes. So an ID comes along automatically, but let's go ahead and put that in there as an integer. And then for location, I know that I'm going to need an address line one. That'll be a string. And then I'll need an address line two. This information you will get from the, either the user story or from mockups or from the design. What fields does the member or host need to put in? Let's add a couple more columns for our address. We'll need the city as a string. And then of course, we're gonna do region instead of state so that it can be international and then country as a string. All right, so when you click off, you can see it doesn't go all the way, but you can easily move it to show the whole little box there. So I'm just gonna scroll down and now I'm gonna put in some associations. The member is actually going to create the location. So we need the location to belong to member. So that means the member will be the parent. Go ahead and connect the dots there. And I connect the dots there. So it's child and parent. 
Now I may need a little bit of finessing to make it look pretty. You want to move it around just for clarity to make sure that you know what it reads. Now that I've made this association, I need to add the member ID to the child table. So we'll add member ID, and that is an integer. And again, we need to make the box a little bit bigger so we can see it. And that's the start of our map. Then with the magic of editing, I have the full map. So again, we have the member. And actually, I've added a couple of attributes thinking through the whole process, going through my user stories. I'm going to need a Stripe account ID so that members who are hosts can get paid. The profile has a name, a photo, a bio, and it belongs to member. So it's the child of member. And then location became a really big hub. It has a lot of things to it. Of course, we have all the attributes that we put in earlier. And then it has objects that belong to it. For example, the location photo. We're going to have lots of different photos and you can rearrange them. So we need that as a separate model. And then the available date. That's what the host is going to put in as dates that are available to book a space. And now the booking. That belongs to both the location and the member, which will be the guest, booking it. So it needs a start date and end date. And it belongs to location and belongs to member. And then we have our review. That's a review of the location that the member has left. So it belongs to the location and to the member. So we're just going to do a simple rating system, star level, a text. Messages, we're actually going to go ahead and use a gem, act as messageable. And when we install that gem, it will install the table. So I'm just putting it to the side because it'll make all those connections for us as part of the gem. And there you have it. You can see the beginnings of our app taking shape, and it's a guidepost to see how we're going to build the app. In our next lesson, indeed, we start to build the app, and we'll start with that member table. Thanks so much for watching this third lesson of the first unit for the course Better Than Airbnb that you are currently getting free because you found us on the web, or you're subscribed to my mailing list, or to my YouTube channel. If you are not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can go ahead and push that button right there. Folks there, get the episodes just a little bit sooner than everyone else. And if you are not already on my mailing list, head on over to rubythursday.com to sign up. There'll be more information in upcoming emails about the course and about some extras that I'm going to also offer. If you have any questions, please be sure to leave a comment below. Thanks again for watching and see you soon.